I was right about Fields of Mysteria. Hey friends, I'm Ashley and welcome to Ash's Cozy Corner. This video is all about how I feel about Fields of Mysteria. I have played through the entire early access and I have given myself time to think about my favorite things, what I wish I could change, my thoughts on the gameplay, characters, skills, animals, everything that was included in early access. I honestly have so many thoughts and don't even know where to start, but I will try to keep it as organized as possible. Fields of Mystery released in early access, and if you don't know what early access is, it is when a game is released while they are still in development so developers can get feedback from the community for future updates until the game is fully released. To be honest, I don't ever buy early access games since being burned by a game I will not mention that released in early access years ago and it still isn't complete. I want to say this now. This game does not feel like an early access game at all. Other than the marriage and festivals, this game has everything a farm sim would need and up to 40 hours of content to do just for the story. Please don't be scared of purchasing this game in early access. Even if they don't add a single extra thing, I still feel like it's a full game. So don't worry about being burned. Just wanted to clear that up about early access. Okay, onto my thoughts and review of Fields of Mysteria. Let's start off with the basics. Is it a good farming sim? Let's talk about it, shall we? Since Fields of Mystery is a farming sim, let's start with the farming mechanics. You start out with a tiny plot of land where you can do the basics like tilling, planting seeds, and watering to make them grow. I think this is the perfect time to mention that the watering can does not run out. Hello, quality of life. On top of that, the farm is completely customizable, so you can use a shovel and dig new plots to grow crops anywhere on the farm. Because of this, this means that you can make your farm centered around farming, or you can make it not centered around farming at all. You can also choose the shape of the soil, making it into hearts or whatever shapes you can think of. Using your farm tools will only use energy if you actually use the right tool and hit the spot you're going for. You won't use any energy if you hit something that doesn't work with the tool you have out. My character also moves so freaking fast. Just these three quality of life improvements mentioned have changed the farm sim game for me. But let's keep going. On top of farm customization, you have plenty of options for your character customization from the start. So many options for hair, like long, short, outfit options ranging from head accessories, dresses, shirts, pants, shorts, shoes, and even more. I unlocked so many customization options while playing, and you can even customize your character anytime you want in the menu. Even having an area where you can save outfit presets after you make them, saving so much time if you wanna switch up your character later. Another very important thing on your farm are the animals. Some things are similar to other farm sims, like taking care of them, and some things are very different, but again, I like the changes. For example, you don't just throw eggs in an incubator and wait for them to hatch. You actually have to have a male and a female, feed them candies to make them mate, and then you will get a fertilized egg that will hatch in a few days. I personally enjoyed the work that it takes to breed chickens compared to other farming games. Like I said, in most other games, you normally just throw an egg in the incubator and call it a day. Each time you breed animals, you also have a chance to get a rare color, like the coveted pink cow. Having the chance to get random colors makes it feel more worth it and will definitely have me spending more time with the animals trying to get the colors that I want. You can put accessories on your animals like a freaking top hat and buy fun little things like a seesaw to place on your farm that they can even interact with. Overall, there's eight different animals to choose from so far, including a capybara, which I feel like is plenty to choose from. Again, I don't think there's anything that I would change about the animals or care of the animals so far. They've thought of so much. Now, crafting. The crafting in this game is absolutely fabulous and not overwhelming at 
all. I'm not joking. For example, in other farming sims, I would get so overwhelmed with having to have a million different machines or tappers or furnaces or whatever. Yes, I love you Stardew, but I am looking at you. In Fields of Mystria, thank the Lord we only have a few different places to craft at. Let's take the mill for example. This is where you can craft any animal product you would need. Mayo, cheese, butter, all of the things, and it's all done with one machine. Same with blacksmithing, same with crafting, one place for those specific items. And the game has global inventory for crafting, meaning you do not have to have the items in your backpack to use them for crafting or cooking. If you all don't think this is a complete game changer, oh my gosh, I almost cried when I realized. This and this alone makes the game worth it. I'm not even kidding. Don't think that this makes it boring or easy because there's still so much to craft, so many different items to make, just better quality of life and saves time because it's in one place. I think if I had to pick one favorite thing from the entire game, it would have to be the crafting. Final answer, maybe, I don't know. I love this game so much. Since crafting, cooking, blacksmithing, and so on are part of the skill tree, I'll mention that fairly quickly. Fields of Mysteria has nine different skills to level up, resulting in almost everything you do in game gives you experience for something which is so satisfying. There's farming, fishing, archeology, span cooking, ranching, crafting, blacksmithing, mining, and combat. Those sound fun, don't they Squidward? I've already talked about farming, but let me mention a bit about each. Fishing is more like Animal Crossing, which I know so many people appreciate. It's a one and done, get a bite, click the button once to reel it in. Not challenging whatsoever. Archaeology is a new one to me. This one levels up when you find artifacts. It definitely doesn't have to be a skill, but like I said, it's just something extra to give you more satisfaction, which I like. Cooking, ranching, crafting, and blacksmithing are all pretty basic like other farming sims, but I did want to brag on the mining and combat really quickly. The mining in Fields of Mystria is fairly similar to Stardew Valley. It does feel very balanced, and I don't feel like I have to spend two seasons in the mines to get what I need. The levels are a decent size, never being too big, and also have fun surprises like whirlpools to visit completely different sections of the level. There's different bugs, gems, and artifacts to find in each different biome in the mines, giving it a fresh feel so you don't get too tired of the same levels. I personally really like the mines, and like I said, I feel like they're extremely well balanced even the monsters. Y'all, I am not a huge combat girly. I love Final Fantasy, but my favorites were always the turn-based combat. I know I can't have that in many games anymore, so I have to to settle. But if I'm going to settle, I do feel like Fields of Mystria has done a really good job at it. The enemies all have a specific way they attack, making them each feel very unique and not just throwing their self at you constantly. One enemy likes to jump at you, get stunned, and then you can attack it fairly easy. Another uses electricity as it's coming towards you, but eventually runs out, so you can start attacking it when it runs out and it starts to run away. I don't have to feel like I'm just button mashing like I did in Rune Factory, which is a blessing. The enemies also change regularly in the different biomes and all have unique looks. I do want to add, I have only ever used a sword. I actually don't even remember if there are different weapons. So there's something that could potentially be a con for someone who does like swapping between different weapons. Again, that's just something that I didn't pay attention to while playing. You know what I do pay attention to though? Cute lighting in game rooms, which is why I'm about to tell you about today's video sponsor, NeonSigns.com. I already have so much golden lighting in my cozy room, but I have been wanting a neon sign with my channel's name on it for so long because I felt like it would tie everything together and I was 100% right. NeonSigns.com offers free quotes on all signs, 
ranging from business neon signs, wedding neon signs, to outdoor neon signs in any design you can think of. I personally wanted my sign made with Milky Honey, a font I've been using since starting my YouTube channel. The process was so easy from start to finish, including arranging the color and sizing with the team to make sure I got exactly what I wanted. I personally just wanted my channel name and font, but if you're interested in shapes, logos, or designs, that is also available on the website as well. I had such a good experience and the pricing is very competitive. Neonsigns.com is offering up to 50% off on their signs right now. So if you're into cozy lighting like I am, be sure to click the link in the description below and check it out. Back to Fields of Mystria, let's talk about villager relationships and the storyline. So far, you can only go up to four hearts with the villagers, which is two heart events per character. It's really not a lot so far, but trust me, that does not stop you from getting to know each character. You can tell they spent a decent amount of time on the dialogue. Each character says different things, has different personalities, different interests that show very well. The character models are extremely gorgeous and also emotive when different things are happening. However, the best thing I've ever seen in a farming game when it comes to villagers, Friday night at the end. There are so many conversations between the villagers without you that you get to watch and listen to, making it not feel so lonely, like you're the only one interacting with the others. I have had so much fun listening to the Dungeons and Dragons game dupe, watching the poker games, and helping the kids with the heist. This makes the game feel so much more lively and just original. I don't feel like the entire game circulates around my character. It makes the town feel more alive, if that makes sense. The villagers will also comment on you donating things to the museum, or after doing specific events together, they'll mention it when you talk to them afterwards. The heart events have been different too, depending on the character. Celine's heart event showed up in my mailbox while Baylor's was on the request board, each very specific to their personality. Another huge attention to detail was the fact that each villager's outfit changes for each season, making it interesting to see what outfit they would have next. For the storyline, it definitely kept me engaged the entire time and was never stressful, which for me is a good thing. Oh, yeah. And there's magic. I feel like I've already talked about so much, but I just keep thinking of more and more things to talk about. The magic in Fields of Mystery can fully restore you, water your crops for you, grow your crops, and even more. There's even some spells you can use to help you with combat. I feel like the way they included magic in this game flows through other parts of the game very well, but I won't spoil anything. I also can't forget to talk about the town rank, which adds an extra oomph to the game. This is yet another just extra thing that didn't have to be in the game, but is, and I love it. You level up the town rank by fulfilling quests, shipping items, and doing the storyline. Each time the town rank goes up, you get rewarded all for just playing the game. Like I keep saying, they just thought of so much and I don't know how they put it together so perfectly. If you have a completionist heart like I do and like to have a goal when it comes to finding gems, fish, bugs, etc., this game also fills that void with museum collections. Definitely an Animal Crossing community center vibe, with so many items that you get from completing these, resulting in feeling so rewarded when you do finish them. I don't know about you, but I love feeling rewarded. I know this seems overwhelming with all of the levels, customization options, skill levels, ranking, crafting, but it's not at all. Just so much content to enjoy because the game does so well at leading you through all of this stuff with quick and easy tutorials. So don't worry if you're a beginner, this game is perfect for beginners to jump into a farming sim. Let's talk about the few cons that I have seen, and yes, I mean just a few. Truly. I just love this game, I'm so sorry. So my game has crashed twice. I can't identify if I did something specific to cause this, it definitely seemed pretty random, and I think that's just because it is a new launch, 
but even with the crashing, I haven't lost but a few in-game hours as it always auto saves at night, so it didn't bother me too much. I mentioned this earlier, but another con is not having marriage or heart events past four hearts. Again, this is another one I totally understand because it is in early access, but like I said, I still feel like the characters have so much dialogue and personality already, so this is just me being impatient. The days do go by pretty quickly in Fields of Mysteria. Some days I do feel like I am rushing so fast and still only get one thing on my to-do list completed. I don't think days should be incredibly long, but maybe just a tad bit longer. I definitely wanted to mention that one as that does tend to stress people out. And my very last con that I truly am really disappointed with, the festivals. There is only one festival in Fields of Mystery right now with others to come in future updates, this being the Spring Festival. I attended the Spring Festival and it did fall pretty flat. There was nothing really to do that I noticed, only a few shopping stalls. I do hope that they can add to the spring festival and any future festivals they add because honestly it doesn't match up to the crazy amount of content in the rest of the game. Friday at the end actually feels like more of a fun time than the festival so far. With how amazing the rest of the game is, I'm really hopeful that the festivals will be better when the game releases fully. Now let's talk about the price. Fields of Mystery is $13.99. That's around 35 cents per hour if we're basing it off of the 40 hours of gameplay in the storyline. Y'all can check that math if you want to. Math is not my strong suit. Anyway, let's be honest, you will probably get way more playtime out of that if you continue to play like I do. It is a farming sim, so of course you continue to play after the story is finished, collecting the rest of the museum sets, the fish, crops, animal colors, and decorating your farm, which by itself you could spend over 40 hours doing. So honestly, it is definitely worth the price tag. I actually think the game should cost more, don't come at me. Plus, let's not forget the roadmap that they released recently showcasing all of the stuff that will be added to Fields of Mystery in future updates. In quarter four, we'll have more villager events, new enemies for the mines, more rewards and quests, a new festival, skill caps raised, more home upgrades, and more, and same for the future updates. So much more content added on top of what we already have. To cap everything, I was right about my opinion of Fields of Mystery. It is an amazing farming sim. It normally takes me at least 10 in real life hours to get into a farming sim. This one took no time at all. This is my personal opinion, but Fields of Mystery has officially topped Stardew Valley for me. Stardew Valley was my number one cozy game for years since 2017, and I never thought anything would top it. Fields of Mystery, yes, in early access, has officially topped Stardew Valley and is now my favorite cozy game of all time. I'm just as flabbergasted as you are, trust me, but I'm so excited to see what Fields of Mystery has in store for the future. I'm so excited to see Fields of Mystery as a full game and see how many cozy farming sims are inspired by in the future. With that, I think you all can clearly tell I recommend this game for everyone, absolutely everyone, even in early access. I know so many of you all have already played Fields of Mystery, so if you have, please put your pros and cons in the comment section below. That way people can not only get my opinion that is so full of love for this game, but also others' opinions as well. You all are absolutely amazing. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a cozy day and God bless.